Zilklorin was sitting in his mansion in the capital and looking at a recently acquired magic goblet. He thought that he was incredibly sparkling and was a real treasure, and he looked just fine. The young man took the cup in his hands and began to stare at it, thinking about what material it was made of. Zilk decided that in any case, now he could drink sparkling water whenever he wanted. The inventor suddenly had an idea, and he came up with the idea of making a cocktail in a highball. He went into the kitchen and took a rectangular block of ice and thought that at first he wanted to use magic to break the ice, but decided that he himself should succeed. Zilk put the ice on the board, took a sharp knife and a hammer, and, hitting the knife with the hammer, split the ice into two parts. He got a perfect ice cube, so the guy did the same thing a few more times and filled a transparent glass with perfectly smooth square ice cubes. Next, Zilk opened the bottle and poured the contents into a glass, mixing thoroughly. The young man ordered the cup to be filled and a carbonated drink immediately appeared in it, which he poured into a glass with ice. Zilk took a long sip of the cold carbonated drink and closed his eyes, wondering what would go with the highball. The young man cooked fried chicken and breadcrumbs and served it with a slice of lemon. He picked up a fork and tried a piece, but the chicken was very hot. Zilk tried again and came to the conclusion that the ginger and garlic seasoning was perfect for this dish. The guy took a lemon and squeezed its juice right onto the dish. After trying another piece, he decided that it was even better with lemon, after which he washed it down with a cold cocktail and loudly said that it couldn't have been better. The inventor looked at the brand new cup and thought that such a luxury was only for 30 million. It was the results of his efforts to try to live a luxurious bachelor life, and finally he lived the life of his dreams. Zilkloren raised the magic goblet and single-handedly toasted his efforts. If you think about it, a lot happened today. The idea of the cooler design came to his mind at a concert, and he was able to buy such a valuable cup for only 30 million. The young man raised a toast and shouted that today was a wonderful day. He also expressed the hope that from now on his dreams would come true and next time he would drink spritzer. The happy inventor began to hum loudly in his kitchen, which is why the sound of his contented singing could be heard outside. The front door opened in a dark room and a blonde girl in a dress came in, who announced that she was at home. The stranger looked very tired, there were dark circles under her eyes. The girl began to violently slap her cheeks and order herself to focus on the music. Her name was Katerina McClare. In order to find her place in the world of music, she left her family's home and lived alone in the capital. The blonde girl walked into the hallway and cursed because she decided that she would not be able to live in the world of music if she could not cope with loneliness, so she ordered herself to hold on. Katrina took off her shoes, there was a large blister on her foot because of which the girl fell to the floor and began to crawl on all fours. She thought that the shoes still needed to be changed, because it was very painful for her and she no longer wanted to wear these shoes. Katrina got up, leaning on the wall, and found herself in the living room, which was filled with garbage and scattered things. The musician thought that there was a shit in her apartment, so she needed to clean up. When she was little, the servants did everything for her, so she never did it herself. Katrina fell on the sofa with a bang and decided that she would do it next time, and now it's time for bedtime. She lay down for a while, but suddenly jumped up, tossing things that were lying on the couch and decided that it was too early to sleep, because she wanted to eat. The girl went into the kitchen and saw that she had only old dried vegetables and meat of unknown origin, so she decided that it would be better to stay without dinner today. The refrigerator did not allow her to store food forever. Besides, it was also huge, so Katerina got a little angry, staring at the refrigerator, and thought that it could have been made more compact. She has already sent letters asking the creator of the refrigerator, Zilk Lauren, a bunch of times, but it seems that the improved products have not started to be sold. Katrina wrote that the stove switch was too tight. It was hard for women to turn it. She would like to use the dryer when she was outside the house, so she asked to make it more compact. The girl decided not to give up and send the letters on. And now she decided that she needed to practice playing the violin. She went into a magic instrument for sound insulation so that the music could not be heard outside and took out the sheet music. Katerina McClare began to practice intently on a musical instrument. But suddenly she heard the sounds of someone singing coming from behind the wall. The girl got a little angry and thought that her neighbor was some kind of noisy guy. She decided not to pay attention to extraneous sounds and ordered herself to concentrate on the music. So she took the bow again and began to play. But the noise from the neighbors did not stop, so Katrina was seized with rage, and she kicked the wall with all her might. The girl did not calculate the strength and fell, clutching her sore leg and screaming furiously. Despite all this, the noise never stopped. Katerina pressed her ear to the door and screamed, calling her neighbor a bastard and saying that if he was going to sing, 
then at least he should put sound insulation on himself. In one of the houses of the capital, a satisfied Zilkleren was raising a magic cup in a window, and in another window Katerina Maclare was violently shouting and hitting the wall. The next morning came in the capital. The young inventor was walking along a crowded street and thought that he would have breakfast in the same coffee shop as usual. But there were a lot of people there, so he thought about where he would have a snack. Zilk saw the door to the cafe and looked through the window, noticing that there were no customers inside and only empty tables. The young man wondered if this coffee shop had always been here. Zilk held a briefcase in his hands and entered the establishment. He was immediately greeted by the bartender and asked to take any place he liked. A blonde-haired, mustachioed man in a waiter's uniform was standing at the bar. Zilk took off his raincoat and thought that the cafe had a calm atmosphere, and there were almost no people either. He picked up the menu and saw the breakfast set, and then decided to choose what to drink. The young man noticed the man in uniform and thought about the smell that came from him, so he turned to the owner and asked if he really had coffee. The man was surprised that the young gentleman knew what coffee was. Zilk explained that he had drunk it a long time ago. Coffee existed in this world, but it was not widely distributed. He had already drunk all the coffee that he managed to find in the capital. The owner of the establishment confirmed the guest's words and poured the ground grains into a cup. Zilk sat on a chair near the bar, and the mustachioed man told that he had tried it a long time ago, when he was still traveling and could not forget its taste, so he decided to open his coffee shop to do what he loved. The owner wilted a little and added that, unfortunately, coffee had not attracted customers yet, but he continued to experiment. Silk thought about it and said that few people could understand the beauty of coffee the first time. At that moment he thought that the locals did not know how to enjoy drinks. A young dark-haired guest asked the host if he could pour coffee for him with the breakfast set. The man smiled and confirmed, saying that he would do everything now. He poured water from the kettle into the flask and lit a fire under it. Next, the man poured ground coffee into a vessel and put it over the flask, after which the water boiled and began to rise. The owner of the coffee shop mixed the beans with water, and the water in the flask turned brown. He poured the resulting coffee drink into a mug and handed the young inventor his coffee. Zilk thanked him and thought that the drink had a wonderful aroma. The quality of the coffee was completely different from what he managed to make himself. The color was beautiful, and there was no sour smell. The young man tasted the drink and reported that it was delicious. The host thanked the visitor for the praise and said that he was worried about serving it to him, since he had already drunk coffee before. The guy asked the man not to worry and added that he did it perfectly. The mustachioed man asked Zilk his name, because few people in the city like to drink coffee. The host's name was Rondell and he handed the guest his breakfast, which consisted of an omelette, lettuce leaves and butter. Zilkloren took a cup of coffee and introduced himself, which made Rondell very surprised and asked if he was really that inventor. The guy confirmed, and the man smiled and said that such a famous inventor of magic tools visited his coffee shop. It was an honor for him. Zilk was embarrassed and awkwardly replied that there was nothing wrong with it. Another mustachioed man with glasses came in the door of the coffee shop, and the owner greeted him. It was Mr. Noid. The man took off his coat and told the owner that they had not seen each other for a long time, because he was finally able to get his well-deserved day off. The owner of the coffee shop smiled and noted that the butler's job was not easy, and the man asked if anyone besides him had ordered coffee here, because it was very rare. Zilk smiled, and the butler went to the counter and asked for the same drink as the other guest. Rondell said that everything was going to happen now. It was morning in the capital and Zilkloren came to his workshop and wished good morning to employee Tristan. The bored blonde guy was surprised that his boss was in high spirits. The inventor sat down and asked the subordinate if he wanted to know the reason. Offended by the recent departure of the boss, the guy put his head on his hand and replied that he did not want to. Despite the guy's refusal, Zilk began to talk about how the carbonated water from the artifact he bought yesterday made a great swill. It was perfectly combined with fried chicken. The man added that this was not all and began to talk about this morning. But Tristan interrupted him because he covered his ears with his hands and shouted that he did not want to hear anything. Rudge came up to the men. She thought that they had been very noisy in the morning and tried to calm her colleague down, saying that Zilk had always been such a person and this was not the first time. The girl handed the complaint sheet to the boss and the man was surprised and asked who she was from. Rudge replied that the complaint was from Katerina. Upon hearing this, the inventor got angry and crumpled the piece of paper, and Tristan jumped up and hit the table, shouting that it was Katerina the Snake again. Zilk wondered what kind of person she was, after all, sending complaint after complaint. 
the man immediately imagined how the Gorgon jellyfish was sending them all these complaint sheets. Rudge thought for a while and noticed that she seemed to have all the magic tools developed by the inventor. Another employee asked if she had bought everything and called her rich. Mr. Lauren clutched his head and replied that he didn't care how much she bought, because the complaint was a complaint. The female employee said that if you read her complaints, it didn't look like she was doing it with the aim of offending someone. Rudge picked up the sheets and began to read out requests to make the refrigerator more compact, as well as comments that it was difficult for women to adjust the stove. The complaint letters most often described the inconveniences of everyday use, as well as the moments that prevented women from using tools. The boss agreed and noted that it was true that there were disadvantages in the complaints that they had not noticed during production. But he asked what kind of nonsense it was, because 9 out of 10 women were satisfied with everything, so these were Katarina's problems. Rudge agreed, and Tristan said that she didn't understand anything about magic tools, so he wondered why she wrote so much then. The guy added that it was hard to change anything in the current designs. Zilk confirmed and added that there were no useless parts inside the magic tools, so if they removed something for the sake of size, then nothing would work. Rudge enthusiastically said that they should strive for the ideal and find a solution for the sake of their clients, because that was their mission. The boss hit the table and replied that he didn't care and didn't care. He was making magic tools just for his comfort. At this time, the blonde elf band leader announced that they were done for the day, so he ordered everyone to disperse and said that everyone had done a good job. After the rehearsal, the members of the orchestra put down their instruments, and the dragon invited the others to go out to eat together. The man agreed, and the girl apologized and replied that she couldn't do it today. At that time, Katarina was packing her violin and was very embarrassed to think that she had almost fallen into the mud at rehearsal today. The girl grabbed the instrument and ran quickly, deciding that as soon as she returned home, she would have to rehearse herself. Suddenly, a member of the orchestra, Conductor Ildoba, called out to the girl and asked if she would come for a minute. Katarina turned around and screamed, asking what was the matter. She thought that he had noticed that she was shirking during the rehearsal. The man with the elf ears handed the violinist a piece of paper and asked if she was always interested in composing music. The blonde girl picked up the piece of paper and was surprised, but confirmed the man's words. The conductor explained that original music was needed for their next concert. He usually composed it on his own, but he had a lot of other work to do. Katarina was delighted and asked if he really relied on her for this. Eldob explained that he had entrusted this not only to the girl, but if her music turned out to be the best, then they would play it, so he asked Katarina if she would agree to participate. The violinist immediately shouted that she, of course, agreed. Turning around, the long-haired conductor pointed his index finger and added that she had one week. He understood that composing her music was hard, but rehearsals were also very important. Katarina realized that the conductor had noticed her failure and wondered if she would succeed. The violinist began to consider the assignment and decided that she should try, because you never know when another such chance might turn up. Katarina McClare clenched her fist and shouted that her talent would be revealed here, but suddenly clutched her head and realized with horror that she was completely empty. Six days have passed. Katarina was lying on the couch in her apartment and still hadn't thought of anything. It was already evening, and she hadn't even rehearsed. The girl raised her head and ordered herself to calm down, deciding that she would simply not have dinner and sleep less. The violinist picked up her musical instrument and thought that first she needed to play something and then maybe something would come to mind, so she decided to concentrate. Suddenly, the girl heard the sounds of singing coming from behind the wall again. Katarina decided to ignore them and continue playing, but noticed that the rhythm of the neighbor's song was not bad, so she started playing it on the violin. The sun went down and the stars appeared in the sky. Katarina McClare held a stack of pieces of paper in her hands. She threw them into the air and shouted that everything was ready and she did very well. The violinist looked at the notes and realized that it was just her neighbor's song, and she just sorted it out and wrote it down, so she wondered if it was plagiarism. Mrs. McClare had been listening to music all her life, but all her neighbor's songs were something new. The girl wondered if the stranger was some kind of famous musician. She scattered the sheets around the apartment and decided that pride would not allow her to use someone else's song, so she decided to compose a new one. The next morning came in the capital. Out of breath, Katarina ran into the building where the orchestra rehearsals were taking place. The violinist apologized for being late and began to take out her musical instrument, but the conductor asked her not to worry because not everyone had come yet. The long-haired man said that they had passed the music today, so he asked if the girl had finished. 
Katerina confirmed and said that she would get it now, but at that moment sheets of music fell out of the case of her instrument and scattered on the floor. The conductor picked up the music and asked if it was Katerina's. The man thought about it, and the violinist stood silently and watched his reaction. The conductor found another melody, but the girl ran to him, trying to snatch it, because she was in a hurry in the morning and accidentally put the first version of the music. Aldoba stopped the young musician, paused for a moment, reading the melody, but soon his eyes lit up and he replied that it was wonderful. Her first song was mediocre, but the second looked fresh and innovative. Katerina was embarrassed and had already branded herself mediocre. The conductor added that he would show the others, but most likely they would stop at the first option. So he praised Katerina and thanked her. At that moment, the violinist prayed that her original melody would not be chosen. Zilkloren came to a concert in the capital. He was sitting in the auditorium, but suddenly he thought, because the song played by the orchestra was very similar to the music that he liked in his previous life. The members of the orchestra intently played the melody, and the conductor commanded them. The young inventor thought that if you listen carefully, this was the music. After the performance, a member of the orchestra was informed that Katerina had a great composition. They discussed that tickets for the next concert had already been sold out. The musicians reminded the girl that before that she had already said that she wanted to compose her own composition. But no one thought that she would get such a masterpiece the first time. The violinist was embarrassed, but thanked her comrades. Aldoba called Katerina over and asked if she could come to him. There was a conductor in front of the girl and an unknown man who asked if this young lady had composed such a beautiful composition. The conductor explained that the man was the director of the opera house, Marco Montpicino. Taking hold of the dress, Katerina politely bowed and added that she was glad to meet, after which she introduced herself. At that moment, the girl was thinking that a big shot was standing in front of her. The blonde director said that such moments when young talents showed themselves always made his heart flutter, and thanks to the girl, their opera house was now on everyone's lips, so he would like not to miss this opportunity. Katerina did not understand, but the man asked if she could write another composition. The director understood that it might be difficult to surpass the previous composition, but he was sure that she would cope. After bowing, Marco left, and the conductor turned to the violinist and asked if she could handle it. Katerina confirmed it, but wondered what she should do now. The young composer returned to her house and, clutching her head, screamed that she definitely would not be able to surpass this composition, especially since the director did not like the compositions of her own composition and he considered it mediocre. With her abilities, Katerina could not satisfy the ears of ordinary listeners, let alone Aldoba. The girl clutched her head and silently lowered it. But suddenly her gaze became more serious and she realized that she would listen to the neighbor's song again and write an arrangement for it. So after the rehearsal, Katerina went home and eavesdropped on her neighbor all day, hoping that he would sing. And soon she heard quiet singing through the wall. The girl got angry and wondered why the neighbor was singing so modestly today. Was it really better for her to give up? Katerina took the bow and decided that if she couldn't hear her neighbor today, then she didn't know when he would sing next time, so she had to take a chance. The girl was standing in a black dress with a violin in her hands and was in a serious mood. She stood in front of the neighbor's door to listen to the singing. Suddenly, the girl thought about the fact that the neighbor was silent. She mentally asked him to continue singing. But at that moment the door opened and hit the violinist on the head. Katerina fell on the tiled floor of the corridor and clutched her head, because it hurt her. Standing in front of her was a tall, dark-haired Zilkloren, who was very surprised by what was happening. The young men exchanged glances. The young inventor looked into the refrigerator in his apartment and found that he had run out of ginger, so he realized that he would have to cook fried chicken without it. Zilk slammed the refrigerator door and decided that the taste would not be the same without ginger. He quickly put on a raincoat and thought that the market should still be open, he hated shopping there, but this time he would have to. The young man ran out of the apartment, but when he opened the door, he saw a strange woman sitting at his door with an abrasion on her forehead. Zilk was angry and dumbfounded, wondering who this woman was and why she was near his door. The guy realized that he had seen her somewhere, but couldn't figure out if it was his imagination. Katerina got up and shouted at her neighbor, asking if she could open the door more carefully. Zilkloren was a little embarrassed and crossed his arms, sarcastically saying that the girl was not standing at the door on purpose, but was passing by. The inventor got angry and said that he had no idea who she was, but asked what she was trying to do by sticking to his door. Katerina clenched her fists and screamed that nothing like this had happened, and the neighbor replied that if she lied again, he would hand her over to the guards. 
calling the girl a stalker. Upon hearing this, Katerina screamed that she was not a stalker, and there was nothing like that. Zilk held the door open and asked what she was doing here then, because ordinary passers-by don't sit under other people's doors. Katerina thought a little and looked at the confused and surprised neighbor. She giggled a little and began to apologize. The girl said that she would explain the reason to the guy, if only he would not complain about her to anyone. Katerina looked down, the young neighbor thought that she was probably going to tell the truth, so he said that he would listen to her. The girl touched her index fingers and awkwardly asked where they would talk. Mr. Lauren was surprised, and the girl explained that she lived next door, but it was better not to go there. Well, it would be strange to go to a neighbor. Upon hearing this, the young man shouted, asking if the stranger lived in the neighborhood. Katerina confirmed it. The young people approached the coffee shop, which the young inventor had recently visited. They were greeted by the owner and asked to take their favorite place. The blonde girl opened her mouth in surprise and said that it was very beautiful in the coffee shop. Wearily, Zilk sat down at the table and thought about the fact that next time he would come alone. The guy asked his companion if she had decided what she would drink. Katerina looked at the menu and said that she didn't even know what to choose. The inventor looked at his neighbor and thought that she was sitting, choosing, taking her time, so she was a strange woman. The girl assumed that she would drink green tea. At this time the owner came up to them and the young man ordered one coffee. Katerina noticed that there was no coffee on the menu, and Zilk explained that there was no coffee on the regular menu, but there was a special one. The girl was surprised and slammed the menu, saying that then there would be coffee too. The guy explained that the coffee tasted bitter and not everyone would like it, so if the girl had never drunk it, then it was better not to start. Katerina smiled and said that if the coffee was bitter, the same as green tea, then she could handle it, so she also ordered one coffee. The host waiter understood everything and recorded two coffees. The inventor was sitting in a cafe and watching his companion, who was humming something and wiping her hands with a towel. Zilk thought that there was elegance in her movements. There were not expensive apartments in the house in which they lived, which meant either that she earned well or that she came from a well-off family. The girl turned to the guy and offered to introduce themselves to each other until drinks were brought to them. Zilk agreed, and the girl added that her name was Katerina McClare. She was the second daughter of the McClare family and played the violin in the Metropolitan Orchestra. Her interlocutor was surprised by the words on the violin in the Metropolitan Orchestra. He remembered where he had seen her and explained that she was the girl who played the violin in the theater. Katerina was delighted and clapped her hands, saying that he was at the concert and it was great. The musician asked the inventor what his name was. The guy asked if the stalker knew the name of the one he was stalking. Katerina screamed that she had already said that she was not a stalker. Zilk Lauren introduced himself and added that he was the inventor of magic tools. The girl was taken aback by what she heard and asked again. Katerina screamed and started pointing her finger at her interlocutor, saying that she had sent so many complaints to his office, but nothing had changed, she called the inventor stubborn. Zilk realized that Katerina was the snake that was sending him complaints. The guy jumped up and shouted that it was not enough for her to send complaints to his office forever, so she decided to come to his house. The girl got even more angry and asked who was the snake here. Katerina began to itch convulsively and scream that she had just found out that she had been living next to him all this time and if she had known this before, then. Zilk interrupted the girl and shouted that she was already infuriating him. At this time, the owner of the establishment arrived at the screaming couple who brought coffee, thanked the guys for waiting and stared at them in surprise. The mustachioed man added that he also brought sugar and milk if they wanted to add it to the coffee. Zilk thanked the man through her teeth, and Katerina noted the pleasant smell and added that it was the first time she had seen this dark drink. The girl thought a little and took a sip, which made her eyes widen. She lowered the cup and said in disappointment that the coffee was bitter. Zilk smugly recalled that Katerina had said she could handle it. For him it was an obvious outcome. The violinist confirmed that she had said that, but the coffee was too bitter. Zilk explained that in this case she could add milk, so it would be easier to drink it. Katerina decided to try it and added some milk to the coffee. She was angry because the color of the drink had changed a lot. The inventor offered her a taste, and the girl took a sip, after which she was very happy and said that it was delicious and she could drink it like that. Zilk turned away and thanked him with displeasure, because if the girl did not like the coffee, she would also be rude to the owner. Zilk put the cup on the table and crossed his arms, saying that if Katerina was not sitting under his door to leave a complaint, then he asked what she was doing there then. The girl sweated a little and assured the interlocutor that it was definitely not for the sake of a complaint, and the guy replied that then he was waiting for the true reason. Katerina explained that it was a long story, so she asked if the guy was okay with it. Zilk took a sip of coffee and asked for a short story. 
The girl was even more embarrassed and said that she would try. After some time, the neighbor told the guy everything, and he realized that it was not surprising that the melody he heard seemed familiar to him. Did he ask Katarina if she was seriously using his song? The musician was embarrassed and confirmed, and Zilk added and clarified that since the first song was a success, she was asked to compose another one, so she couldn't think of anything better than to sit under his door and eavesdrop until he sings. Katerina looked down and confirmed all of the above. The young man got angry and replied that then she was not a stalker, but a voyeur, and he understood everything. Katerina got angry and said that the guy didn't understand anything, and in general it was his own fault that she could hear his singing all the way through the wall. The girl asked if he had tried sound insulation. Zilk thought a little and admitted that he was really to blame here, but this did not give Katerina the right to sit under another person's door. The musician leaned on the table and clasped her hands, asking her to forgive, because she understood everything. Zilk Luren agreed and got up from the table. Katerina asked if he was angry that she had used his song. Pulling on his raincoat, the guy said that he prevented her from studying when he sang. So he asked her to consider that they were even, especially since he was not a musician and this song was not his composition. The inventor put on a raincoat and said that he had gone home, but Katerina ran up and grabbed his clothes, asking him to stop. Katerina McClare held the young inventor by the cloak and started talking about his song. She recalled that he said that he did not compose it, so the girl asked if she had heard it. The neighbor turned around and thought that if he told the truth, she would think he was crazy, so he replied that he thought he was the only one in this whole country who knew her. Katerina said that since there was a song that no one else knew, she assumed that the guy probably had more and added that it was impossible for these masterpieces to disappear just like that, so she suggested that she would play them. The young man replied that he was not interested in this, so he asked the girl to find another fool. Katerina screamed, I beg him, Zilk screamed, asking to let him go, and the girl replied that until he agreed, she would not let him go. Hearing the noise, other coffee shop patrons turned around and thought that the young people were quarreling. The inventor asked the neighbor to sort out her problems on her own, which is why the girl let go of his raincoat and menacingly said that then they would make a deal. Zilk came back and sat down at the table, saying that he had been listening to his neighbor. Katerina explained that he would sell her his songs, and she would play them. The earnings from one melody would be about 300,000. She would give him 40% of the proceeds. Zilk said that it sounded good, of course, but he asked if she was directly confident that each melody would make a profit. He also asked what use her money was, because he was an inventor, so if he wanted, he would get any amount. Katerina thought about it and called her neighbor a damn bourgeois through her teeth and nervously said that he could earn any amount from them. Zilk advised the girl to offer him something unusual, maybe some treasure or artifact, because she was from the McClare family after all. Katerina thought about it and remembered that she seemed to have one artifact. From what he heard, the inventor jumped on the table and shouted, asking which one. The musician said that the sound garden could record about five songs and they could be played at any time, whenever you want. The young man realized that the artifact was like a player or a radio, which surprised and pleased him very much. The guy slapped the table and said loudly that it would do and he would take it. Katerina started waving her hands and explaining that the sound garden was damn expensive. The inventor assured her that he would give her as many songs as she wanted, and if she didn't like them, he would be ready to pay any extra money. Hearing this, Katerina thought that it seemed that the young man was very fond of artifacts. The violinist was embarrassed and explained that she used it, often turned it on to listen to music. Upon hearing this, the guy said that then the conversation was over and offered the girl to write if she changed her mind. Katerina grabbed her neighbor's raincoat again and started shouting incoherently, asking him to wait. Zilk stopped, and the girl agreed and said that they had agreed and she agreed. The young man asked again, the girl explained that her future depended on him. The guys agreed, and the visitors of the cafe thought again that the young people were quarreling. Newly minted colleagues were standing in the corridor of one of the mansions of the capital. Katerina handed the sound garden to her neighbor. The inventor picked up an object similar to a modern column and realized what the artifact looked like. The guy said goodbye to the neighbor, and she turned him around and asked him to wait. The young man was surprised, and the girl explained that the complaints she had sent. Suddenly Katerina became embarrassed and asked if he had read them. Zilk immediately replied that he had not read it. Then the girl began to shake him desperately and ask why. The inventor explained that he did not have free time to read the complaints. The girl dismissed the neighbor and added that he was the inventor of magic tools, and the opinion of customers should have been in his first place, because he could improve his inventions using the opinion of customers. The tired neighbor sighed and said that if everything were so simple, but complaints should have been written more logically, 
and not guided only by their feelings. The guy went on to say that before writing complaints, the girl could first understand at least a little better how magic tools work in general. Zilk spoke louder and louder with each word, and finally abruptly slammed the door and left. Surprise. Katerina remained standing in front of the closed door and awkwardly said goodbye to her neighbor. Zilkloren brought a sound garden into his apartment and decided to see how it works. The artifact had all the necessary buttons, and it seemed to have all the same convenient functions as in a modern player from the inventor's world. The mysterious box had buttons for rewind, delete, record, pause and play. The young man noticed the dirt that had got into one of the buttons and thought about how it was possible to treat artifacts like that. Zilk put the device on the table and began to gently wipe it with a rag, thinking that the stupid woman needed to wipe it. The young man turned to the artifact and asked him not to worry, because now he will take care of it carefully, and now he decided to check how it works. The young man remembered that Katerina seemed to tell him that it was easy to use. The buttons with Roman numerals were the choice of the recorded track. Zilk pressed the number one button and music started playing from the artifact, and the guy thought that he missed this feeling. Zilk decided to make it a little louder and turn the wheel on the device. The music started playing even louder, and the inventor realized that it was a violin. He listened carefully and exclaimed joyfully that it was wonderful. The young music lover decided to listen to everything that is recorded on the artifact, and if he does not like something, he will ask familiar musicians to record something for him. The young man began to press all the buttons with the image of Roman numerals in turn and realized that there was one violin written everywhere. The disappointed young man heard a knock on the door and pressed pause. He turned towards the door and nervously asked what was the matter. Katerina came to his apartment and screamed that it was too loud, and if he listens to music on the sound garden, then let them use sound insulation. The neighbor was a little embarrassed, read his neck and apologized, remembering the sound insulation. He used to think that sound insulation would never be useful to him, but now it is still useful. Sound insulation was needed for secret negotiations, business conversations, and the girls complained that someone was always eavesdropping on them. The inventor picked up his new artifact and decided that now he would look for hidden functions in it, because there were probably a couple of them in it. The guy thought that there was only one function missing in the artifacts, he was the one who understood. Most artifacts had not only one function, but even several that you might not even guess about. Gwen, the store owner, told him about it. Zilk decided to try it and started pressing different combinations of buttons, double pressing, several buttons at once, and then he poked at everything in a row. Suddenly, an unfamiliar voice came from the column, congratulating the guy on finding the sixth record. The voice reported that his name was Selba McClare and he was the one who used this artifact. The voice suggested that whoever found this recording must have been Katerina's new friend or maybe her boyfriend. The man said that he gave this artifact to Katerina for her birthday and, most likely, when someone finds this record, he will no longer be in this world. The inventor realized that the voice belonged to Katerina's grandfather or great-grandfather. He thought that he was very sorry that his granddaughter or great-granddaughter gave this artifact to the first person he met. The voice in the sound garden added that he had one request but asked to keep it a secret from Katerina if she was around. He asked to press the delete and pause button at the same time, because the fact was that in addition to his wife, he had a mistress. Upon hearing this, Zilk began furiously pressing the pause and delete buttons at the same time. The guy thought that he did not want to burden himself with other people's problems. It was starry night in the capital again and a crescent moon appeared in the sky. Inventor Zilk Luren was about to leave the door of his workshop. The rouge worker reported that it was already dark outside and negotiations with suppliers were delayed. The young people went outside, and Tristan said that he would escort rouge and go home. These words made the girl very happy, but she added that he was somehow unreliable. The guy started sweating and started pointing his finger at the boss, shouting that only their master of magic tools had a B rank at all. Even he was not that weak. Zilk added that if the girl was afraid to come home late, then he could borrow artifacts for self-defense, so that she would fight off any scoundrel. He also said that such a weapon looks like an ordinary bracelet. Rudge realized that self-defense artifacts usually looked like jewelry. The boss explained that they were not supposed to stand out and interfere in everyday life. The employee said that she was afraid that her husband would become jealous of her when he saw jewelry from another person on her and asked if another man was giving her jewelry. Tristan lowered his head and noted that the artifacts that Zilk had were worth millions, although if it was for self-defense, it was somehow wrong to wear jewelry from another man. The boss said that it was not a gift, he just wanted to borrow it for the safety of his employee, so the guys did not understand anything. 
Tristan explained to the man that it hurt men's hearts, but he still didn't understand. Rudge pressed her hand to her cheek and added that it was still very nice, and the boss thought that he still didn't understand anything. Mr. Lauren asked the workers to leave it and return home more carefully. He added that they had done a good job and said goodbye. The man exhaled with relief and decided that it was time for him to go home. Walking along the deserted night street of the capital, Zilk looked up and saw that there were so many stars today and it was very beautiful. In a previous life, because of the lights of apartment buildings and lanterns, the stars were almost invisible. The young inventor suddenly stopped and turned his head. He realized that he was staring at the stars and wondered where he had gone out. Zilka walked into an obscure block and decided that he needed to return to the main street, but saw the inscription Ice Rock and wondered if there was a bar there and whether he should have a few drinks and then go home. The inventor went down the stairs to the basement where the bar was located and entered. He saw a large bar with many shelves, on which various bottles and glass glasses were located and a grand piano stood in the middle of the place. The guy thought that it was a spacious place. He saw a waitress who was rubbing transparent glasses and greeted the guest. Zilk began to reflect that the elf was beautiful and elegant. He assumed that she was hired to attract new customers, and since there were no customers, it means that the quality of the establishment was not very good. The young man realized that it was a women's bar and opened the door to leave the establishment. A pretty waitress said that before leaving, he needed to have a drink, because leaving the bar just like that is bad form. The guest decided to have a drink and leave after that, so he asked the girl to pour, and she asked to order. Zilk replied, asking to cook something at the discretion of the waitress. The girl agreed and ice crystals suddenly appeared from her hands. The inventor of the magic tools opened his eyes wide and realized that it was ice magic, a very complex magic that was very difficult to control. The girl with the elf ears lifted the transparent ice crystals into the air and then caught them in a bowl. The guest realized that, without a doubt, she was a skilled magician. The girl took bottles of alcohol from the shelf, and the inventor realized that these drinks and ice indicated that she was preparing to query. This cocktail was also in this world. The bartender added 45 milliliters of white rum, 1 teaspoon of sugar and 15 milliliters of lime juice. The visitor realized that next she had to add syrup and the girl took out a bottle of pink liquid. The visitor was surprised and asked what it was, and the girl explained that it was the nectar of a thousand-day flower, and said that a thousand-day flower bloomed only once in a thousand years. Besides, it bloomed for only a couple of hours, so its value was enormous. The confused inventor asked if they had used it. The girl in the bartender's clothes added that this nectar was best combined with this cocktail. Zilk realized that he had not seen anything like a blender, so he wondered what she would do next. The elf girl took a glass with ice and nectar and magically lifted it into the air, which caused it to spin quickly. The inventor thought that she had used magic again, and the girl put a mint leaf in the cocktail and thanked the guests for waiting, handing the man his query. The guy thought that even the name was the same, but the taste was the most important. Even though the girl was good at using magic, he asked all the questions, did the same sour taste turn out and was the ice finely ground enough? Zilk picked up a straw and tasted it a little. He thought that finely ground ice, pleasant acidity and refreshing taste were complemented by the perfect taste of alcohol. He looked up and looked at the waitress, saying that it was delicious. The girl smiled and confirmed it. The inventor of magic tools almost completely finished his cocktail. He did not expect that a cocktail using magic would come out so delicious, and the bartender clearly had a lot of experience. She developed the recipe and technique for a long time. He was sure of it, because everything was simple and perfect. Getting up from my chair, Zilk bowed slightly and apologized for calling the bar feminine. The elf girl laughed and said that it was not surprising that he thought so, because there were many similar establishments around, and she liked to provoke people with her behavior, for which she apologized. The guy winked at the bar employee and asked if she would pour another cocktail. The girl agreed. Happy singing could be heard from the workshop of the inventor of magic tools. Zilk Lauren, the boss, was sitting in glasses and developing a new instrument. Tristan drew attention to the man and, lifting his safety glasses, said that he was in high spirits again today. The inventor confirmed it, and the guy asked if he had found a good store. Zilk explained that he had found a wonderful bar, the atmosphere there was great, so it was just perfect. The blonde employee assumed that the man would not take him to this bar, and the boss only confirmed his guesses. In addition, he explained to the young subordinate that he had managed to get an artifact from a violinist named Katarina, so these days were definitely great. Tristan thought about it and drew attention to the tools that were lying on the table. He said that he had been interested in it for a long time, so he asked Zilk what he was making. 
Suddenly, Reg appeared behind the guy and added that she was also curious. The dark-haired inventor said that in one cafe he drank a drink called coffee, so he came up with the idea to create tools for grinding coffee beans. The boss explained to his employees that, of course, he could always go to the coffee shop to drink coffee, but he wanted to be able to drink coffee both at work and at home, so he decided to make a coffee grinder. Blonde-haired Tristan scratched his head and asked what coffee beans are. Raj added that she didn't know what it was either. The man replied that this was not surprising, because this drink was not widespread in this country. The employee was angry that the boss was collecting some useless thing again, so he asked him to collect something so that they would all become rich. The guy continued to shout, saying that this way he would make a large number of people happy and it would benefit their workshop. Zilk turned away and got angry. He asked Tristan to shut up and asked if he could at least sometimes create magical tools that were useful only for him. In desperation, the young employee grabbed his colleague by the shoulder and asked her to say something to the boss. Rudge asked, what was the point of telling him something? Zilk always collected what he wanted first. After hearing the girl's words, Tristan turned to the boss again and asked if this thing would be for sale. The man with glasses got even angrier and exclaimed that he wasn't collecting it for the money. The girl leaned on the table and said that actually, their job was to sell what Zilk creates. She had no idea what kind of drink this coffee was, but she would try to create demand for it. The boss said that it was great, and the guy screamed, asking why she was so serious and why did she indulge him at all. Soon, both the manual and automatic coffee grinder were ready. The chief inventor began to pack his things into a briefcase and told his subordinates that it was time for him. The guys were surprised and asked if he was leaving so early. Zilk opened the workshop door and confirmed, adding that he had to check if both coffee grinders were working. The man also noticed that they all worked late yesterday, so he allowed the guys to leave early today when they finished all the work. The girl happily agreed and waved goodbye. The inventor came to the place by the lake, where he had previously tested a magical smoking tool. Zilk set up a tent and took out coffee beans and coffee grinders. He decided to make coffee right away. Suddenly, he heard someone's voice greeting him and informing him that they had met again. It was the blonde tourist with whom they had tasted smoked food and fish together. Zilk was not very pleased with the sudden appearance of a guest and asked if he was going to live there. The man shook his head and explained that it just happened. He actually had his own house. He asked if the inventor believed him and listened to him at all. 